As we approach the 40 year anniversary of the F5 tornado that ripped through parts of the valley, we're going to take an in depth look at the science behind it and what happened that day to create the perfect storm for disaster. Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm joins us now with his breakdown. Hi, Eric. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, you know, whenever we're talking about big time weather events, whether it be a tornadic outbreak or even a winter storm, we oftentimes use the analogy. It's kind of like baking a cake or baking cupcakes. You need all the ingredients to come together just right. And unfortunately for our area, the ingredients all did come together back on May 31st, 1985. First things first, we had a lot of wind shear. That's the changing of the wind direction and the wind speed with height through the atmosphere. We had very strong winds, about 5,000 to 20,000 feet above our heads. That created ample amounts of wind shear. We also had what's what we call a cap in the atmosphere. Basically, as you go up through the atmosphere, usually with height, it cools off. But when you run into a warmer layer of air aloft, we say that's kind of a cap or an inversion. And you can kind of think about it like a, a boiling pot of water on a stove and you've got a lid on top of that pot. Well, if you take the lid off suddenly, then all that warmth is going to start rising very, very quickly. And that's the kind of thing that uh, we have sometimes in the atmosphere. We also had underneath that cap a very warm and humid air mass. For the end of May, it felt like more like July. It was in the 80s. Dew points were up around 70, so a very juicy air mass. And we also had a cold front, a strong cold front heading our way. And this front is what broke the cap. That's what made the air rise up through that cap and uh, made things kind of kind of go crazy, unfortunately, late in the afternoon and early in the evening. Just a reminder of kind of the, the meteorology or the science behind how a tornado forms. Well, talked about that wind shear where you have changing of the wind direction and or the wind speed with height through the atmosphere that creates a horizontally rotating column of air. Well, when you get thunderstorms, of course, that means the air is starting to rise. And so those thunderstorm updrafts can tilt that horizontally rotating column of air up into the vertical. So now you have rotation in the vertical and sometimes out of that you can get a wall cloud that forms a lowering of the cloud base. And underneath that, if the rotation continues all the way down to the ground, well, that's the definition of a tornado. If the rotation stays aloft, then it's just a funnel cloud. So a, a, a rotation that, of course, touches the ground. That is the definition of a tornado. Now, the F5 that rolled through parts of eastern Portage County, Trumbull County, and into Mercer County, that gets most of the buzz when it comes to this big outbreak. But we had several strong tornadoes that day, including in northern Columbiana County, an F2. We had an F3 in northwestern Trumbull. There's actually an F4 tornado that hugged the Mercer Crawford County line in northwestern PA. This is the kind of benchmark tornado outbreak for our part of Ohio and western Pennsylvania as well. In the other half of the state, in kind of the western part of Ohio, it was April 3rd, 1974. This included the F5 tornado in Xenia, Ohio. And so that's the big outbreak that everybody remembers in that part of the state. But yeah, the F5 that rolled through Newton Falls and Niles and over towards Wheatland, an F5 or an EF5 in today's terminology, that's defined as winds, a uh, maximum wind of 200 miles per hour plus. It's estimated that the uh, tornado, especially around the Niles area, did produce up to 300 mile per hour winds. And of course, uh, much devastation occurred as a result of that. But F5 tornadoes, EF5 tornadoes, very, very rare. That's the one uh, around here, May 31st, 85. And in the state of Ohio, just a few other F5s or EF5s in recorded history. These strong tornadoes are much more common in the southern US and out across the Plain states. Another way to look at this and how rare these are, EF0 tornadoes, the weakest tornadoes, they comprise of about half of the uh, tornadoes across the uh, country. When you get up into EF4 and EF5 territory, these are very, very rare. Much less than 1% of all tornadoes are this strong. So this was uh, the, the kind of uh, day that certainly is what we call a generational tornado outbreak. This is the kind of thing that we can only expect once every handful of decades at most. It is very rare at any point for our part of the country to mm -hmm. see something like this. And even where tornadoes are more common in the middle of the country and down into the south, an outbreak like this would be uh, fairly uncommon even down there. Yeah, you know, we, we do see severe weather in May, but you know, what was one of those ingredients that was kind of out of season for that time of the year that really allowed everything to come together perfectly to allow it to be that expansive of, of an outbreak. I think it was kind of it was the wind aloft. Um, usually we see strong winds aloft, like I mentioned, 200 miles per hour, mm -hmm. almost up up at uh, several thousand feet above our heads. We see those kind of conditions in the winter more often than in the spring and in the summer. When you have that kind of wind energy aloft, right. that can really be one of the key ingredients towards going going towards a big outbreak. Yeah, yeah. certainly. Uh, thanks so much, Eric, for that breakdown. Mm -hmm. Great stuff there. And coming up tonight on 21 News at six in just a few minutes here, I'm reporting from Newton Falls, the first half. Yeah.
the deadly tornado set its sights on before moving east across the county. I'll bring you the story of Tessa Wujic Spletzer, a junior at Newton Falls High School at the time who experienced the damage and cleanup of her town in the weeks to come. She gives me her perspective of what the day was like and how her hometown rebounded and became closer as a community. It's all part of our week long coverage of the 40 year anniversary of the May 31st, 1984, 1985 tornado. That's coming up in just a few minutes on 21 News at 6. Lindsay? All right, yeah, a lot of people remember where they were, have a relative that knows where they were that day.